In part six of our airflow conversation and our study of psychometrics, which is properties and how air behaves, we want to talk about the law of the T. Okay, now what I mean is if you have a T, a standard T, like an intersection in a road, um, a takeoff in a piece of ductwork, a T in a pipe where water goes in two directions or comes in from two directions, T's behave in a certain way. So that's what we're talking about here. Technically, the law of the T is known as nodal analysis. What flows into a T must leave the T. Inflows must equal outflows. When you're pushing fluid, air, or anything into a T, it doesn't go anywhere but out the other side of the T. So it's actually pretty a pretty simple explanation. But it, this affects a lot of things in HVAC. But applications that are affected by this include airflow, electric current flow, water flow, and even traffic flow. So to take a real quick example of what we talk about with the law of the T, we can take a look at an intersection, a T on a road. We have our main street, which in this case, for example, sake is labeled Oak Street. And then we have Elm Street coming into the T. Okay, traffic flows through Oak Street and Elm Street joins it. It doesn't go anywhere else. So from the left here on Oak Street, this traffic continues, but then Elm Street joins it. So if I have three cars over here, two cars over here, after, the, after they meet, I have five cars coming out. Okay, so again, if Oak Street has five cars a minute, Elm Street has 10 cars a minute, coming out to the right, I have to have 15 cars a minute because it doesn't have any place else to go. So we're going to take another example. We have an electrical T. Okay, I have five amps coming in. We have two amps going to some device down at the bottom. And what do we have remaining? Okay, so the flow in is 5 amps. The flow out of the T total must be 5 amps. So one path is carrying 2 amps, so the other path has to be 3 amps. We don't miraculously gain or lose current in just a simple T in electrical or anything else. Okay, so we know we have 5 amps coming in, and our outflow on one side is 2 amps. And our outflow on the other side has to be 3 amps. If we have water, it works the same way. My inflow is 8 gallons per minute. One of my outflows is 3 gallons per minute. Okay, because, it, because out has to equal in, if we take our 8 minus 3, we have 5 left over. Okay, because my outflows must equal my inflows. Now, we can mess this up a little bit and we can add gallons per minute. What does this have to do with air? Well, it's basically the same thing. So if we have 5 gallons per minute at 150 degrees Fahrenheit and 5 gallons per minute at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we know our flow into the T is 5 and 5. Okay, that's 10 GPM. So the flow out of the T must also be 10 GPM. Now, we have a temperature to deal with. The mixed water temperature is the average of the other two temperatures because the flow rates are equal. So I have 150 plus 100. That happens to equal 250. And I divide it by 2 because, again, these flow rates are equal. Now, we're going to talk about what happens if our flow rates are not equal, but in this case, the flow rates are equal. Okay, so my mixed water temperature is 125 degrees. By the way, this happens on hot water systems all the time and in boilers and some other applications, chilled water systems as well. So... This is actually a pretty important thing to remember, regardless if we're talking airflow or not. Now, what happens when we have two different rates here? Okay, we still have the law of the T, which means what comes in must go out. 
Okay, so I have five gallons per minute at 150 degrees. I have two gallons per minute at 100 degrees. Okay, so we know our inflows are five and two, so our outflow must be seven. Now the two entering streams have an unequal water flow rate. The mixed water temperature will be a weighted average. Okay, so we have five at 150 plus two at 100 equals seven total at X degrees Fahrenheit. We're solving for the X. So what we do is we multiply five times 150. Okay, that gives me 750. We multiply two times 100. That gives me my 200 still equals 7x. Yes, I'm going back to high school algebra here. Okay, now, to solve for x, you have to do the same thing on both the sides. So we add the 750 and 200 together, because there's no x's or any letters after them. comes up with 950. To get rid of this 7 here, I have to divide both sides by 7. So x is 950 divided by 7 equals 135.7 degrees is my mixed water temperature. So again, got to use a little bit of algebra here because we're solving for x. And who said high school math will never be used in the future? You do use it. Okay, so now let's look at more of the airflow because that's really what we're talking about with psychrometrics. We have airstream 1, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit at 60% relative humidity. Airstream 2, 90 degrees Fahrenheit at 50% relative humidity. Our mixed stream, okay, is 10% airstream 1 and 90% airstream 2. The mixed airstream has to be a weighted average, just like what we did. Okay, so we have to take 10% of our 100 degrees, 60 degree 100 degree Fahrenheit, 60% relative humidity air, and 90% of our 90 degree Fahrenheit, 50% relative humidity air. Okay, so multiply the 100 times 0.1 and the 60 times 0.1. Again, 10% equals 0.1. And we come up with 10 degrees at 6%. We take the 0.9 times 90, we get 81. We take the 0.9 times 50, we get 45. Now, we add those two together, we have our mixed air at 91 degrees Fahrenheit and 51% relative humidity. Try it on your own examples and see what comes up, okay? Just again, try to use reasonable numbers when you try this on your own. And that's how we calculate mixed air. Okay, now where does this come into play? Economizers. Okay, bypass dampers. Coil bypasses. We use it in water all the time, in hydronics. Mixed water temperatures in boiler loops. Mixed water temperatures in domestic hot water supply. So all of the law of the T applies to just about everything we do in HVAC whenever we mix two streams of a substance. And that is it for part six.